When you start living with the end in mind, everything starts to change. What are people gonna say about you? What message is your life gonna speak when you're long gone? Cause you weren't born by accident. You didn't just happen to be where you're at and happen to watch this video. There is always a reason. Getting real with PLT. Glory, glory, God, glory. Some people must trip out hearing your language, bro. Honestly, <laughs> they must be like, are you, are you lying? You know? They yeah, must... well, yeah, yeah. When I share my testimony, like a lot of people, they can find it hard to and, uh, like gauge and understand, which I find really funny because the stuff that, that has happened to me and the stuff that continues to happen to me is, is just normal Christianity. You know, it should be... <clears throat> It should be normal for us to get around people and have demons manifest. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, like we shouldn't. And, and if we're afraid of that, then the truth is we're not. We're not. Um, we don't know fully who our Jesus is. Hmm. If there's if there's any um, element of of fear, you know, what does the Bible say? Perfect love casts out fear. You hmm. know, hmm. and uh, you know, I would say don't be afraid of any of any demonic encounters. You know, know that that's happened for a reason because you're the light, man. Hmm. Go and cut that thing out, drive it out. It's, you know, it's the command from, from Jesus. What did he say? You be my disciples, man. My <laughs> disciples. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons, raise the dead. It's the four things that we're, we're meant to be doing. Yeah. That's, that's standard. Think about that, bro. The standard is raising the dead. It's crazy. Huh? When did we see someone last raised from the dead? When did we last hear? Of that guys like David Hogan and them, yeah, yeah, it always yeah. seems to be off in these far off remote places yeah. for some reason. And often, many of those places are also quite heavily engaged in in terms of witchcraft. Yeah, so they yeah. understand that the spiritual realm is real. Yeah, but it's you know I, I believe it's well I know it's unbelief that's the blockade to that. Mm -hmm. But our Jesus is greater. We've got to raise our faith level to the level of Jesus, yeah. where He was able to get around. Lazarus been dead three days in the tomb and he wept because of their unbelief. Mm. He mm. wept, but it didn't stop him from raising Lazarus from yeah. the dead. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're getting straight into it. Yes, guys. We're just, <laughs> we're rolling straight into the conversation. Um, I'm going to have to keep coming, checking your comments, but good morning from South Africa. What's Oy. up? Madeline? Good to have you here. All right, guys, we're going to get into it. Uh, make sure you share this, share this with people. It's going to be a bit crazy. We both felt like um, God set this up for a, a reason and um, it's going to be powerful. Like Peter really believes that it's going to be powerful as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So let me do the official introduction so we can just go for it. So, <laughs> welcome to the Fuse Life podcast, episode number 43. As you know, we're all about God-given purpose and assignment. Everyone's born with a destiny, with a purpose. And uh, when you walk in that, you are walking the abundant life. So my guest tonight has a crazy story. I didn't even really know how famous he was. <laughs> he's been through a lot. And obviously, he's going to talk about it. Um, but as you guys know, I'm a heart guy. That's number one to me. Skills, talents, gifts are all great. And power is all great. But the heart of a man says wow. something. And... I felt this man's heart when I met him. It's probably a year and a half ago now. Mm -hmm. And in our communication and watching different things that he's put out and videos that he's done and testimony, his testimony. So I'm really pumped to have my guest in the flesh, in the flesh, <laughs> Peter Teak, bro. Thank you so much. My brother, I'm just I'm just honored, bro, that I get to be your first guest in this in this style, bro, this interview style. I like conversational. It's very free flowing. Bro. It's free flow. I, I love it. I, this is my dream, like I said to you. So why don't you tell a few people about who you are and what you've been up to? And Yeah, so um, so for those that don't know me, my name is um, Peter T. Um, or recently, um, I changed my artist name to PT, real name uh, Peter Tuhuru. Um, I've been in the New Zealand music industry for near on going probably like 13 years now, full-time for about eight years. Um, I've released uh, four albums, um, millions of streams like yeah my baby's what like I don't even know the stream count it's like what over 8 million streams or something on one of the songs so like tens of millions of streams on, on YouTube and yeah it's it's a lot <laughs> it's, it's a lot and um, you know I traveled the world and all sorts of crazy success saw all sorts of crazy things uh, performed in front of tens of thousands of people um, but yeah it was empty <laughs> Was, was totally empty was lacking and um, was constantly running into running into um, situations where I'd be just presented with the 
with the opportunity to to think on God and think on eternity and think like, man, what is this? What does this all mean? Like all the success and everything that I've vied for, everything that I've I've worked towards, what does it all mean? And then yeah, five years ago I had a crazy encounter, and um, the Lord brought me back to Him on my knees, <laughs> crawling back to God, and He's just. It's just been amazing. I tell you, the last five years I've been walking with God, it's just been so unreal to me. I'm thinking, like, why did I ever think that this would not be amazing? Why, why as a child, how, how did that lie creep into my head that I would never, it would never be cool to be walking with God? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's literally the coolest and best thing yeah. anyone could ever do. Yeah. It's amazing when you really, when you're walking with God, He's incredible. So, yeah, so that's, that's who I am, guys. Been saved for the last five years, but I knew God. Knew him as a child and um, had all sorts of crazy encounters, which we'll, we'll share about as we as we go along this podcast. Some of the things that I saw and things that happened when I was a child. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just so blessed, God. seriously blessed and highly favored the Lord. Like, who am I? Who is Peter to do all that? That Jesus would rescue him. You know, like he had mercy and compassion upon me. That even in the depths of my darkness and in my sin, that he would chase after me aggressively, hunt me down. And um, and bring me back to him, and just overwhelm me with his love. So I'm just I'm so blessed and highly favored of the Lord. I really feel that. I say that to people every day, like every day. Yeah. Even like people, it doesn't matter whether they're Christian or not. When they ask me, "How you doing, bro?" I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord, bro. <laughs> the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah. Blessed and highly favored of the Lord. It's yeah. Bro, okay, so normally I like to go into people's stories so people kind of get an idea of man, who is this person. Um, you said to me that at 12, around 12, you yeah. knew you were going to be famous. So can we go there? Like, were your parents believers? Did they know God? What was the atmosphere at your house? So, um, yeah, I just I set this up. Like, my parents are both saved in the church now. They, they're, they're running with God for a long time. My, my father wasn't, and my mother also wasn't either. Um, but, yeah, when I came back to the Lord five years ago, he rescued my entire family. Praise him, man. So awesome. But um, yeah, when we were children, my father was adopted to um, to Dutch missionaries, um, and so he he grew up in like the Solomon Islands and the New Hebrides, and he told me he saw all sorts of crazy things. You know, as with living in the Solomon Islands, he saw people coming into church and walking up to the front um, the front of the pews, and they, their legs are bowed by rickets, and no man of God having to touch them, their legs would just get healed. Like in fullness, the legs would just grow up and be totally healed <laughs> just during the worship. You know, he saw things like um, witch doctors coming out to try and challenge the pastors, you know, with bones in their nose and all sorts. Like, we're, we're talking serious witchcraft, guys, not jokey, jokey stuff. Like, this is serious. And, um, yeah, the pastor would just go out and say, in the name of Jesus, the witch doctors would fall down, slain under the spirit. Next, next week they'd be in the church with the bone out of their nose, praising God, hands up. So my father saw, saw very many things, but... Um, you know, because of brokenness and, and the spirit of, um, of of rejection, the spirit of adoption that, that wasn't addressed, the orphan spirit, my father um, fell away as a teenager and joined a gang. So he joined the Black Power, and, yeah, there were lots of lots of very heavy encounters for him there. And then um, he ended up getting into a fight so bad that um, they put him into a coma for three months, and his mother went by his bedside prayed for him every day. The moment he woke up, she dragged him straight back to Wanganui, planted him in the church. And so he went immediately from a gang member to being a youth pastor. <laughs> and he, you know, the Wanganui AOG church at that time, if anyone remembers the AOG in the, like in the, um, in the seventies and, and eighties, it was, it was rocking. Um, met my mother, my mother had just got saved. Um, they got married, but um, my father still hadn't addressed his his rebellion, mm. hadn't uh, surrendered to God, mm. and within uh, within six weeks of them being married, um, he'd pulled himself completely out of the church and went back to the gang. Crazy. So my, my mother thought she'd married a pastor, she'd married a gang member. Bro. So for me, growing up, like what I saw, so you can imagine someone who sees all those spiritual happenings, mm. who um, you know, is around, like he would have seen healings and all sorts. Of, he's yeah, told yeah. me stories of healings, all sorts of things. To walk away from that purposefully, yeah. knowingly, and go yeah. back into the gang, man, he invited all those spirits back yeah, sevenfold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sevenfold. He said, yo, the door's open. And so when I was a child, um, we had um, lots of very, very horrific situations, lots of darkness, lots of violence. Um, there were very many times where um, my father would be possessed and he'd be chasing my mother around the house with an axe. 
And um, I was the one as an, as like an eight year old having to stand in front of my uh, mother to stop him from killing her. Dang. This, this is real, yeah, this yeah, is real yeah. stuff. And my mother, my mother knew that there was just something all my life um, that, that she would be protected if, if I was around. So when he would come home drunk, she would come and wake me up um, and get me around and the, and, and the Lord would just um, keep her protected in those situations. There's a lot of demonic and angelic activity happening at that time when, when I was young. It was crazy, man. Whoa. Um, so you can imagine all that time where it's really crazy. My father going on and I'm seeing horrific violence and demonic situations. But God also was speaking to me at that time. Now, we weren't going to church hard out or anything like that. Um, you know, my mother, she tried to take us to church, but a lot of the churches we were going to were just very religious. So you get in there and, you know, read the word and she's trying to tell them about her husband that needs deliverance. And they're like, we don't know anything about that. Hmm. So, yeah, Christians know the Lord, but they, you know, they, they know, they don't know the power of God. Hmm. You know, They hmm. don't know the transformative power of, of, of who he is. So she ended up having a, you know, deal with like, you know, raising us herself, hmm. trying to teach us about God. But again, God and his and his grace would um, appear like show up and, and speak to me. So from the age of um, would have been around seven or eight, he spoke to me for a period of, of three years every day. Every day he woke me up and he would tell me, I love you. I have a plan for your life, a purpose for your life, and I'm going to use you greatly and I'm going to make you very well known among men. That's how the Lord would say it to me. Crazy. I thought I was going mental. Yeah. Where it just kept coming so often and just the sense of knowing that that was, that was set for my life. Mm. I remember asking, I remember asking some of my primary school friends, so do you guys ever feel like, yeah, this is like nine or 10 years old asking, asking my friends like an existential question like mm. that. Like, do you guys feel like you have a purpose for your life? <laughs> 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 you know, all my 10 men. Yeah, yeah, all these yeah. kids are looking at you like, bro, what? Uh, are you <laughs> all right, bro? Like, okay, you're strange. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I knew it. I knew it was on my life. And, and again, talking to my father, you know, and, and my mother and, and other people around me, other family members, they all said it too. They all saw it on my life. They'd been prayed over me. That my mother would be in church, um, you know, pregnant with me, and people would just come up and just lay hands on her and just start prophesying your son is going to be used mightily by God, all of those things. So mm. this is all preordained by God, man. Mm. This is, this is his journey, his plan for my life, you know, but I believe God was telling me all of that stuff at that time. You know, there's multiple purposes behind it. One was definitely to, to um, bring me peace and security in that time. Mm. Cause it was such a wild time, you, you know, as a kid trying to navigate all those situations mm. That man, it, it almost it, it overwhelmed me, mm. you know, like sadness and looking at my parents and realizing this is not what a happy home is meant to be, mm. you know, and and thinking like this this can't be the way. So God bring in his bringing me that peace, yeah. that that knowing that he was real. And then um, yeah, that leads us to like the first um, demonic possession that I saw, like quantifiable demonic possession. So I used to see my father under, you know, I could tell he was under the position of of um, something or someone else but this was the first time that i saw it and it was quantifiable and i was i was 11 years old so i for the longest time i actually thought that that was a dream mm. i thought that that didn't actually occur and then just after i got saved my mother pulled out her old bible and it's got the date she Crazy. dated it she said me and um me and peter me um delivered um delivered peter my father um on this night so it's there. It's it's written down. And I remember Dang, I was, so it was your dad, bro. It was my dad. Dang. It was my dad. So so picture this, guys. I was asleep. I was fast asleep. You know, it was a school night. And I remember my, my mother walked into my room real gently. She didn't even turn the light on. And she just she woke me up and she just said, Son, I need you to come into the room. And um I get up, I'm like, okay, what's going on, mom? And I walk into the room and my father is writhing around on the bed like a snake, like all the movements of a, of a snake. His arms are moving, legs are moving. I'm thinking, what is going on here? This is really weird. And as I got closer to him, I realized that um, his eyes were completely black, like as black as the, like there's no, there was no whites around his eyes, completely black. So I'm looking at that going, what is this? This is strange. 
And then I can see that there are bones like contorting underneath his cheeks, underneath the skin in his face. Dang. So it's like raising up and dropping down. So I'm looking at all of that going, what is this? And then I could hear guttural tones and like grunts that were coming, not from his mouth, but from his throat. So the noise wasn't actually coming from his mouth. It was coming from his throat. And it was so strange. And I remember my mother, she, she had to sit on his chest to try and pin him down. And then she just, um, she says to the demons, um, well, I thought it was a demon. It was demon. She says, who are you? And they responded, we are legion. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a kid. I hear that. I'm like, what is legion? What is this? Yeah, I, yeah. Have no, I have no frame of reference for this, guys. I've never seen this stuff before. Never been talked to about like this stuff. It was only when I got saved and came back to the Lord, he brought that to my memory again. And I realized like, wow, that was the um, the demon possessed man at, at Gilead. Mm. You know, when he, when he came across him and Jesus asked, who are you? He says, mm. yeah, we are legion for we are many. And mm. a legion is 6,000 strong guys. Mm. 6,000. Wow. Yuck. Dang. So she's into the demon and she, and then she turns around. She says, um, she says, Peter, you need to pray. So I said, okay. I didn't really know how to pray at that time. I just knew, okay, if I just ask God, he'll help. So I just said something along the lines of, Jesus, I know you're real. Can you help my dad? Thanks. Instantaneous deliverance. Instant, Dang. instantaneous deliverance. What did you, you see? The room filled up with the smell of, of alcohol. So that's often what, you know, what happens when demons will manifest or mm. they get delivered, yeah. like the thing that, that mm. they control over, mm. because like, it gets into the environment, the atmosphere and fullness. Mm. Instantly, the room filled up with the, with the smell, with smell of alcohol. My father came back to his senses. His eyes were normal and he, he was sober. Stone cold sober. Unreal, oh. bro. He'd been on a five bender. I hadn't seen my father for like five days he'd been drinking and doing doing god knows what and he was instantly sober to where he sat up in the bed and he was looking at my mom and looking at me going karen peter what's going on crazy and then my mom was just like okay peter you can go to bed now so you know, I, <laughs> I walk off to bed going that was nuts yeah. okay. uh you know and, <laughs> and you were able to go to bed bro yeah well again i i, I guess i thought it was a yeah. dream that's the protection of God. You know, yeah. I kind of think I woke up the next day, not really sure if that was real yeah, or yeah. what had happened. And it's only been years later since, you know, when I came back to God, he just brought that to my memory and then confirmed it with my mother showing me the diary entry of that. So Dang. it's there. Yeah, it's real. I'm not telling porkies. I'm not telling lies. If you want to go and ask my mom, you can ask my mom. She'll tell you straight. Okay. <laughs> this happened. <laughs> Dang. Okay, so you're 12, all this happens, and then what happens from there to 20? What are you, what are you up to in that age? Well, so we, we moved from um, Oakuni to Hamilton, um, and I was there in high school. Crazy thing, another demonic possession happened while I was at a, at a, at a, a, a party, like a, a, an after-school party, um, and I prayed for that girl, and she got delivered as well. Like crazy. She's like walking around like a spider, like the exorcist buzz. Prayed for her, she got healed, and that was crazy. The school was talking about that for weeks, but um, yeah, like how did they process it? Not very well, because <laughs> how do you process something like that? It was like she was like in a horror film, and that Peter dude, yeah, he prayed, and she like she stopped. Crazy stuff has it happened, is. man. But okay. yeah, it, it was it was in my teenage years that um, the music really, I really connected deeply with the music, and I, I, man, the Lord just anointed me for it one day. Like I just started singing and it was like, oh, I'm actually pretty good. Like this is, yeah, this is not bad. And then. Um, <laughs> but yeah. who, who's saying this is pretty good? Oh, like. Other people, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, look, it was a girl and it was a girl in my class. She asked me to sing. And when I, I sang, I closed my eyes and I sang. When I opened my eyes, the whole class was watching. I was like, okay, there must be something on this gift. Mm -hmm. All right, then. And then, you know, typical young Young child, un, you know, unbridled, not in the church, not being raised in the Lord. You know, I just thought, oh, yeah, I am going to use that gift selfishly for my gain and for my desires. And then the words of what the Lord had spoken to me as a child started to come back into my memory. I thought, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be famous. Yeah, because you've told me. You've told me I'm going to be famous. So, yeah, that's what's going to happen. And, um, yeah, I'm I'm the story of the, of the prodigal son. Mm. 
uh, you know, I went to the Lord and I basically held him to ransom. Mm. I said, you told me this. Mm. You've told me that you, you're going to bless me for this. It's my inheritance. I want it now. And it, it all started to come to pass. So, yeah, as a, as a teenager, I just stopped attending like youth groups. Like I used to still, me and my brothers used to still go to youth group as a teenager, but then slowly, you know, the pull of the world became more and more apparent. And um, we just stopped going to those things, started going more and more to parties and going out. And then um, just started in, like investing into the music and knew that that was going to um, become successful. And so then moved from Hamilton. I think I was around um, I was around 19. I moved from Hamilton to Auckland. I knew that I had to move to Auckland in order to make things happen. And then in a very short space of time, I bounced from like one producer to another producer to another producer to where I was signed to a label. Mm. It was literally in the space of like, must have been 12 months which is unheard of because there are very many people I know of who'd, who'd been in the industry, music industry, trying for years to try and um, make things happen. Mm. And then I just come there and then within 12 months, bang, 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 meet that guy, that guy, that guy, signed, song on the radio. That's unheard of, man. Yeah. People try to do this stuff for years yeah, and yeah. I managed to get my stuff to the radio and literally the second single that I put to radio went to A Rotate. Mm. A rotate, if, if no one knows what a rotation on, on national radio is, is it means they play your song eight times a day. That's a, a minimum of eight times a day that they play it. Crazy. This is the second single that I put on radio. Yeah. The doors were open, man. And this is while I wasn't even following the Lord. And yet and yet he'd ordained it. He'd ordained this part because he knew where it was all going to end up. Mm. He knew. Mm. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He knew. He knew you were going to choose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, okay. he knew I'd so, choose right. So you get on the radio now. You got to tell us what that kind of feels like. Like that's pretty crazy. It's it's the it's probably one of the strangest feelings you can have because very not many people get to experience that or get mm. to feel that. But mm. like this this gift that you invest all of your time into, knowing that like national media is the like, that's it, bro. That's your ticket to the big time. If mm. you can get on the radio and, and get some serious some solid radio play, you're gonna be good. Mm. You're gonna do well. And, um, and sure enough, it did. The door started to open after that. Shows started to open, all of these things. And, um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't immediate success to the level that um, I knew it was going to go to. So I just continued to press in and kept going. And sure enough, more doors would open. Songs would get more successful. And then it got to the point where I just had one song that just exploded, that just absolutely took off and just dominated the airwaves of um of urban radio and that um in its release for for at least the next year it was crazy yeah my baby the song my baby and i knew i knew when i heard the beat um that it was going to be massively successful it's crazy like i i knew 100 mm. he, he was we were skipping through beats me and the producer d love and d love if you're watching this guys he saved now so men <laughs> It's crazy what he's doing in the music industry right now. Yeah, me and him are gonna go and redeem all of that stuff, eh? Redemption in Jesus' name. But um, yeah, we were skipping skipping through beats, and then um, yeah, we got to he skimmed past that beat, and instantly something hit me. Oh, bro, run that back! As soon as he ran it back, yo, started writing. I had the I had the hook and most of the song written within the space of like um, five or ten minutes. Mm that's how quickly it came mm. it just it just hit me and then a series of um yeah, the the knowings eh? like when you're in god like mm. you just you know when the lord is leading you you know but i had a series of knowings as well but because i wasn't with the lord you know i couldn't quantify it as being him but i knew if i do this and i do this and i do this it's going to be successful it's going to do well like I knew that I had to film the video internationally mm. and I decided that I was going to film it in London because it's a very, um, it's quite a um, picturesque place and everyone knows, like if you put the big Ben in, everyone mm. knows it's the UK. But then just at the last minute, the um, the guy I was going to use for videography says to me, bro, have you ever thought about Japan? And Japan was actually my second choice. Mm. So I was like, yeah, actually, Japan, we should do Japan. And turns out he'd been in Japan a year beforehand um, so he knew all of the spots that we could go, that we could film aggressively for like four or five days and get lots of stuff done. And I went home that day and I looked at flights and the flights were on grab a seat for like $700 return. I booked mm. them on the spot, mm. on the spot. Cause I just, I knew, yep, that has to be, it has to be this. Then yeah, film the video, come back and yeah, 
close to 10 million views later like it's and it still gets crazy views today mm. i still get people commenting on it and viewing it today it's crazy it's like eight eight years ago now eight years man wow bro well hopefully you're enjoying this if you got any questions let us know so <laughs> I'm intrigued by this because I think fame, right? It's so seductive. And I think a lot of the church mm. also is seduced by this fame. Like mm. fame is fame, whether it's, you know, in the world as a musician or even as a mega church pastor, fame is fame, right? Yeah. It has the same clutch, you know? Yeah. So I just want to know how did that feel? Like people start recognizing you, maybe people start messaging you. How, when did you know, like, oh, flip like people people recognize me now you know? well i mean it's i guess it's the the twofold eh, bro like for your especially for your ego and for your pride it makes you feel really good mm. when people start commenting and saying bro you're amazing you're awesome you're like oh no nah, nah, i'm broke and then you're like yeah mm. you know, the <laughs> but if people are broken mm. if you have if you have brokenness inside of you that you haven't dealt with mm. that serves to fill that hole mm. Mm. so you know a lot of people who are clamoring for fame most of them are broken. Mm. I mean, to be honest, even if you've if you've got if you you know if you've got a massive ego and pride, that's because you're broken too. Mm. You're still broken because mm. you don't know you know who your value is found in. Mm. I now know that my value is found in Christ. So I don't need anything of this world um, to tell me who I am. My gift does not dictate who I am. Christ does, and what He did for me. That's what dictates who I am. And oh. and what what am I worth? What are you worth? We're worth a man dying for us. Someone died for me. That's it, bro. That's it. Nothing else can ever compare. But um, yeah, that that seductiveness of, of fame in the world and even in the church, you've got to be careful, man. We have to be careful that this isn't about seeking a pulpit or seeking recognition for the gift that I have in me. You know, it's all about me. And I look at look at what I did for God, and I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. That's a dangerous place to be because remember, there are there's a group of people. Think about this, church. There's a group of people that are going to get to God one day, and he's going to say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. Mm. Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we perform miracles? Miracles. Did we not drive out demons? And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. We want to be very, very cautious about seeking the high places, because the high places are, you know, when you get high, the risk of your falling is so great. Mm. The risk of you falling is, is very, very great. Mm. And the only way to safely get high is to get low. Mm. That's the only way to, you know, what, what does Peter say? Humble, your, humble yourselves, therefore, brothers, that at the proper time the Lord may exalt you. Mm. Mm. And that exaltation at that time is not for you. It's for him. Mm. It's for Jesus so that he's able to use you, so that he can use you to reach more of his lost, mm. more of the souls out there that don't know him. But you can make it all about you. Mm. If, you're, if you're not careful, it can become all about you. And then, unfortunately, here's, here's the crazy thing. You could get there and your heart be totally wrong and God's still moving powerfully through you. Mm. That's the crazy part, right? But Matthew 7, like you're saying, these are people that are doing stuff, like casting out demons, seeing the miracles. But here's what I'm really intrigued by. Like, I would love that people probably don't realize the way you're talking now. Like, even for me, like, that's pretty famous, bro. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's saying something. If millions of people are streaming your stuff, commenting, messaging, you're on the radio, you're touring the world, right? Mm. That, that one single, you started touring the world. Can you take us into your head a little bit at that time? Like, what, what's going through your head? What's your processing like? Are you thinking about the future? And what does the future look like for you at that time? Well, yeah, I mean, when it all, but here's, so here's the thing, because the Lord had spoken to me as a child that this stuff was going to happen, it wasn't so much of a shock to me. Mm. It was kind of like, yeah, well, God told me that this stuff was going to happen. So initially it was kind of like, oh, shock or whatever. But then I just began to be, I guess, set into the rhythm of like, yeah, this is just who I am. This is just this is just the type of person that I am. But, uh, you know, many people will tell you that even while I was in the world, for the most part, I always tried my best to stay down to earth. I always tried my best to still converse with people, talk with people, you know, never walk past homeless people without giving them money. Like, my, God knows my heart, man. My heart was still, you know, I, I still like to take care of people and try and be among people. But mm. there was that little thing of mm. that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the man, mm. you know. Mm. And it, it brought me to my knees, bro. Mm. You know, it, it, it crushed me because all of a sudden my – 
my again my my value system became wrapped up in what I did, mm. and that was that's the danger. That's the danger of 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 the giftings guys is that you can get so wrapped up in in how good you are at doing something that all of a sudden it becomes your identity. Mm. And the danger then is is that if that falls away, what's your identity? If you're no longer famous tomorrow, what's your identity? That's where the devil gets you. Mm. That's where he'll he'll crush you and have you going, yeah, you're nothing. See, you're scum. Who are you? Who are you? You're nothing. And that's that's where it got to for me. So before we go into that, yeah. I want to touch on this because I don't think people <laughs> understand, bro. Like, so I'm researching him, right? Because I didn't realize how famous he was. So I go on YouTube and I'm watching these songs. It's like 8.7 million views, crazy views. And then in one of them, like these comments, you know, these ladies, like we gotta go there, bro. We're gonna talk about this. It's these real. ladies, these ladies are like, oh, you know, he's so yummy and da 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 da. And so I just talked to him actually before, going, man, what was going through your head when all these ladies want you? You go to a club, you can hook up with any chick. You got money that you're just dropping all over the place. Can you talk about the height of that? Like a little bit of your experience, man. The you know. A little bit of sin, eh? It all, it all starts out as a little bit of sin and you just do a little bit, you know, and then all of a sudden it, it becomes you. It overwhelms you, you know, and it, it's it's bondage. It's it's enslavement. You become enslaved and a, and a master to your sin. So, you know, what started is just the occasional dalliance here and there became literally every single show I was doing would be, you know, talking to someone and, and taking them back, um, you know, little bit of drugs occasionally here and there all of a sudden then became full-blown um, crack addict to where i was having to use it every day a little bit of alcohol here and there to set the party right then became sorry um four or five day benders like like high level functioning um addict in in every sense of the word where are you doing all this in auckland yeah in auckland around the world like bro i used to oh, it's terrible man i'd go out like on a on a wednesday night i'd, I'd find places to go and drink on a Wednesday night. That's how desperado it was and drink on a Wednesday, find another group of people to drink with on a Thursday to satisfy these addictions to, um, yeah, to replace that brokenness that was there. Cause this was all stemming out of brokenness from my childhood. You know, what I'd grown up in seeing my parents' marriage dissolve as well as a teenager. So there was a lot of, there was a lot of brokenness there that I, you know, I hadn't been raised informed in the lord so a lot of a lot of lies that i'd adopted as my as my truth of who i was and i was always trying to suppress or, or um satiate that i guess like trying to satisfy that that need of that um you know who am i mm. why am i here what is my purpose and this is i, I call it the black hole bro mm. i call it the black hole that everyone has in their hearts in their being everyone is made with this we're made with a black hole that seeks out um infinity mm. it mm. seeks out in eternity and mm. it's it's actually the spirit of god because mm. it's in your heart yeah and he's infinite mm. god is god is in us right he's infinite and so we're seeking out the infinite source we're seeking that out but we try and fill it with things mm. so i tried to fill it with my success with singles and it would it would appease me for a time it'd make me feel full and then it would just start to wane and then i'd be like oh i need something because it's not it's not hitting the same way i'd try um you know alcohol and i'd drink or whatever and then the come downs would hit heavy and i'd have to drink again to try and numb that pain and try and fill it up so constantly seeking after infinity and finite things mm. and everybody does this if you're not if you're not a drinker or whatever and, and you don't know god people will try and fill it with cars mm. they'll try and fill it with houses they'll fill it with money We'll try and fill it with um, success. Some people try and um, fulfill that infinite um, um, neediness, that infinite yearning in their relationships. Mm. They'll try and get that from their wife or their wife will try and get it from their husband or from their kids. And when and what happens when that all busts up? Yeah. People go crazy. They lose the plot. But it's because we're seeking out the infinite and finite things. And I look at it like this way. This is, this is only logical. If your whole desire... As you know, from a young child, your whole goal was to make, let's say you're poor and you want to make a billion dollars. You hit your billion dollar mark in your 30s or whatever. What's the next logical reasoning? Hmm. What's the next logical step? I guess I got to make two billion. Hmm. It's never ending. Hmm. If your whole goal was to get married and have some kids and, and get a house, 
you know, and, and live happily. Well, then you get that and you go, oh, what next? Uh, I guess I get a get another house or mm. try and get a promotion at mm. work. We're constantly seeking for the next. We're seeking for the greater. That's why the Bible says we go from glory to glory. Thank you, mm. Jesus. Mm. You know, and, and God, we can go to never ending heights. But when we're out of him, we try and seek that and things. And ultimately, mo you know, I realized, I'm not saying everyone realizes because some people don't, but I realized that, I realized that it, there was a ceiling to it. It just, it, Ecclesiastes, man, just mm. the madness of it all. Mm. The madness of it all hit me. It was like, wow, every single goal that I wanted to achieve as a child, you know, that I'd written as a teenager that I wanted to achieve, I achieved it. And then it was a case of now what? Mm. Now what does my life mean? The whole sum parts and, and total of who I am and my whole process, everything I did revolved around seeking after these goals. The ultimate attainment was get famous, get all these albums out, get them all, and I got it all. Yeah, great. Mm, awesome. Now what? Mm. And how old are you here this time? I would have been in my mid-20s. So, yeah, I hit the gold single, guys. I hit the millions of streams. I was traveling the world um, and getting paid to travel. That was one of the goals I had. It wrote as a child. All these things were happening, but this emptiness, this emptiness was harassing me. Like, wow, I just, I don't feel fulfilled. It doesn't feel, I don't feel satisfied. What is this? And I'd ask, I'd ask other people in the world and in the industry, guys, what do I do? What's the, what's the next step that I do? And the only reasoning that they could give me was, um, well, bro, you've got to move the goalposts. Hmm. Hey guys, I just want to take a quick minute to tell you about our Royal Hybrids group coaching program. Over a year ago, the Lord started speaking to me about a group of people, a tribe that would only get their value, their affirmation, that would only get their identity from who they are in God and nothing else. And from that place, they were going to do great things on the earth. In the last year, we have seen a whole bunch of people jump into our program, solidify themselves in their identity with God, and from that place, actually start to engage their purpose. Fuse Life talks about the six trees, your spirit, your soul, your body, and then your relationships, your finances, and your purpose. We have seen a whole bunch of people come through this, get solidified in who they are, and then begin their own projects, whether it's a teen mom's project, whether it's a coaching counseling business, or a painting business, publishing your children's book, publishing a puzzle book. We have seen people do all of these kind of things and we just know that this is just the beginning. So you want to go to www.fusebornformore.com forward slash royal hybrids or just click the link in the caption and make sure to check out what we are doing. We would love to have you as part of our tribe. Now back to the podcast. So I thought, wow. These goalposts that I've set ever since I was a child. Now you're just telling me just to move the goalposts and keep resetting goals. Mm. And I'm going to do that until the day that I die. Mm. And then what? That's all you can offer me? That was that was the turning point for me. That was where I started searching it out. I started going, started, I started searching with new age. You know, I started going down that realm and the Nephilim and the aliens and all that cover up, LA Marzulli and Rob oh, Skiba hey, yeah, and all yeah, these yeah, guys. Yeah. I started going, yeah, bro. <laughs> I started going deep on all of that stuff. And it was funny because there are other there are other Christian musicians who are like me who are in the world and they'd had experiences too. And we we'd be like getting drunk together. We start talking about it. Yo, the Nephilim G, yeah. the Nephilim bro. <laughs> We're having these stories like there's giants out there, cuz yeah. these stories of Maori mythology, bro. Oh, they're real cuz bro. They're straight up, bro. They're real. <laughs> yeah. But it was all God. Man, he was wooing me back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was wooing me back to him, you know? And as I started to go down the rabbit hole, guys, I started to go deeper and deeper and deeper in the rabbit hole to where I finally got to the point where I realized it's Jesus. It's Jesus. You can come, you can come all the way to the end of it. And it's Jesus. If you're a true seeker, you'll find him. I believe that. It doesn't matter if people are like in Buddhist teachings or whatever or new age teachings, just continue to pray for them because if they're true seekers, they'll find him. I agree, bro. Completely. Yeah, they'll find him. He's a good God. He would not hide himself from people who are desperately seeking. It's all about the intents of someone's heart, eh? You know? How earnestly are we seeking him? And I've, I've sought him so much that I've, I've laid it all down for him. Laid it all down. Everything in my life is laid down and surrendered to him. It's been a process of, it's been a process of dying, guys. 
<laughs> a process of, of crucifixion. <laughs> <laughs> bro, your mum. Yeah. Your mum's alive today. Yeah, yeah, she is. But she was alive today. probably praying for you this whole time. Well, no, because huh? no. So my mum, my mum fell away into new age teaching too, wow. right around the time of, of, um, of, of my parents' divorce. So she was in new age teaching. She was in crystals and spirit, astral projection, all of that stuff. Huh. And then I had my encounter. I got saved. I went over to um, Azusa Street um, and I cried out to the Lord there. That was the big, the call, Azusa Street in LA, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 2016. I was, yeah, I, I was I was called there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Why I, did you go? Um, yeah, uh, it's a really long story, but like a, a, a dude who had met my dad like years ago while he was unsaved from Bethel, um, when I got, when I first gave my heart to the Lord and, um, yeah, twenty fifth summer of 2015, 2016, his name kept popping up in my mind, um, Nick Thornhill. And um, I just told my dad, I said, bro, this guy, you, you told me about him years ago, but his name keeps popping up. Can I call him? And I called him and immediately he was like my first pastor. Like I wasn't in any church, but he was the guy who first passed me through. And then um, I received a prophetic word from someone a couple of months after that, that you're going to get invited to go to this big event, mm. like a Christian rock concert. That was mm. how they prophesied it because they didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. um, and then three days later, he said, bro, I feel like God's saying you need to come to this thing. Mm. And when I went, it was wild, bro. It was wild. Wow. Um, yeah, Nick Thornhill's on Facebook. I see some of the stuff. Yeah, on his, yeah, yeah. It's the bro. He's, yeah. he's 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 a good dude, bro. Yeah. It's my boy. It's my dog. It's my dog. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was amazing. Just three days there, just seeing sixty thousand people in a stadium mm. praising God. All sorts of crazy healing reports that came out from that meeting. Like you'd look down into the stadium and see people in wheelchairs. Like people just go up and start praying for them. They get up and start walking. It's the craziest stuff, man. And it, it was just like it was natural. Mm. And the whole stadium would erupt with praise when someone would, would get wow. out of a wheelchair. That would be it. All sorts of phenomenal stories and testimonies of, um, yeah, there was a woman down the front of the stage who had no eye in her socket. She got prayed over and the eyeball formed in the socket. And that's some of the earlier Azusa Street miracles that happened. If you guys are familiar mm. with the Azusa Street outpouring in 1908, I believe, um, they had limbs grow out and all sorts of stuff. So it's not like it's not like any of that stuff is new. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing new under the sun, eh? It's all it's all been there, you know. I think, yeah, I love what Bobby Connor says. You know, God's just been waiting for a people weak enough to work in. Mm. He's found it. A people yeah. weak enough to work in. He's found it in, in this generation. There's and there's many great, um, wow, many great men and women of God who've prophesied over this time. You know, these these end times that we're in. If you don't believe that we're in the end times, I don't know what times you think we're in, but. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's pretty serious. Mm. It's it's pretty out there. Um, but yeah, that there's a there's a massive move of the of the Holy Spirit that's coming, guys, and we're gonna see we're gonna see millions, billions of people come to Christ, come to the Lord, you know. So let's let's go back here. You keep saying you came back on your knees. Why do you say that? So in the year, in the year that um I started having um this you know revelation of, of God and learning about things. Um, I really felt his hand of protection come off my life. So he'd been merciful with me up until that point through all of my life, even when I was engaged in gross sin. That, and that's wild to tell people that. But I can tell you, I can tell you uncategorically, truthfully, the Lord had mercy upon me. Um, but in 2015, I felt his hand of protection come off me and the fullness of the bondages that I was enslaved to mm. overwhelmed me wow. to where, yeah, the sexual addictions, um, drug addictions, um, yeah, um, financially, I, I became quite destitute in that year. Like things just weren't clicking. Mm. Where things had worked before, I just hit the brick wall, man. And through and, and through, um, yeah, addiction, I slowly progressed from being the occasional user of methamphetamine to full blown addiction. Now, anyone anyone who's used methamphetamine who's come out of it and is now saved will will tell you. The demonic encounters that happen while using that stuff is absolutely horrific. It's so horrific. I had all sorts of demonic encounters happening. Um, paintings, the, the eyes and paintings would, you know, they'd have spirits attached to them. They'd be following me around the room. I'd have demons tapping on windows around the house, um, tapping on, yeah, tapping on windows and walls and stuff like that. Horrific nightmares, um, just overwhelming fear and, and um, paranoia. Um, hopelessness yeah it, it was crazy but at the same time all of that stuff was happening 
I was having incredible um, angelic encounters too at the same time. So the Lord was really fighting for me. Mm. Um, I was in a hotel room in Melbourne, and I remember the um, the wall appearing, and all of a sudden I can see Jesus on the cross at Calvary. Wow. And it's not like a movie, but I'm looking up at him through the eyes of the centurion. Crazy. Like actually there. And I can see this. I can see the sky and what's happening in the sky. I see demonic presence and activity, and I can see Jesus is here moving in the, oh, it was crazy bro but the the big the big one for me um was this was right at the end just before i gave my life to the lord i had i had an encounter where the principalities and powers that rule over the entertainment industry came to visit me so i was lying in bed and all of a sudden i like open vision i see these beings start coming before me they start parading themselves before me and they're hideous absolutely ugly disgusting beings and they're telling me their names they're telling me their ages and there's heaps of them and i just instantly knew that these are the guys that rule over the entertainment industry and i saw myself in the spirit so that open vision's happening but i could see myself in the spirit kneeling before god on the sea of glass kneeling before his throne and i can't look up at him because his presence is so magnificent his glory is so magnificent but i could see like his toes <laughs> mm. i could see his toes and i, I could see yeah i had a quarter while on my shoulders and i'm kneeling down and then in the in the room also i looked over in the corner and lucifer was standing there and his the fullness of his presence was not made manifest but i knew who he was he's just standing there watching just just letting it all play out and so these principalities and powers they start making me an offer they say they started saying to me look we're going to give you success to the highest realms that you've never experienced before we're going to take you to a greater level because even even through all of this i knew that there was a greater level that was coming i could feel it there's a there was a greater level that was coming these guys were trying to take that we're going to give you cars. We're going to give you money to the highest level. We'll give you any woman in the world that you want. We'll give you all of the success, including high-level charting billboard success, if you'll just serve us. So all of that's happening. They're making they're making the offer, um, and I'm kneeling before God. I'm whispering to God, like trying to communicate with Him. You know, mind to you know, mind to mind, as we do. Um, I'm saying, Lord, what is this? This is really freaky, man. Can you take this away from me? And he's not saying anything. And I'm looking over at the devil, and he's not saying anything either. And I asked the Lord about it later, and the Lord just told me, he said, free will. He's got to let you choose. It was your choice. I couldn't intervene, neither could he. you got to choose. So these beings are making all these offers, and finally I just I, I clapped back, and I just said to them, guys, look, I know enough about the word of God to know that you guys are a pack of liars. I also know that it's, you know, if, if I choose to go against my God, man, I'm doomed forever. And, um, you know, you guys might give me, what, 50, 60 years of success, if that, if I'm lucky, and then you'll take my life, and then I've got to spend eternity with you guys? No deal, bro. That's a bum deal. When I said that, instantly they, they became small. I saw 400 angels manifest. This is like a... An open vision, guys. So it's, it's an open vision I'm, I'm watching. It's happening on my ceiling like a like a Michelob paint or something. 400 angels come rushing in from the left-hand side, two massive angels on chariots. They hit the demons. Boom, they disappeared. Um, my spirit came rushing back from the throne and hit my body. And now Satan, who was in the corner of the room, filled the fullness of the room. His, his presence filled it fully. And the presence of evil filled my room. I don't know if anyone who's experienced um, deliverance to that level where they've dealt with like the, the demonic realm, um, but yeah, it, it's an overwhelming presence of evil and fear. It's a fear that is, um, it's unnatural. It's, it's a fear of being cut off from God forever. That's the fear that crept in. And he pinned me to the bed. I was under paralysis. I couldn't move. And I, he, he was face to face. I could see his eyes. I could see his teeth. I could see the color of his skin and I could feel the heat from his breath on my face. And he's just saying to me, I hate you. You're filth. You're scum. You're nothing. I'm going to destroy you in not so nice words. And then after about three minutes, that lifted. And then I'm left to process what just happened till the sun came up because there was no way I was going to sleep, bro. 
But I'm sitting there going, what just happened? Did I just imagine all of that? That's crazy. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. And for the next week and a half, I continued to try to use methamphetamine on occasion because by now I was a, a functioning addict. I couldn't get high. No matter, how much, no, no matter how much methamphetamine I tried to use, I couldn't get high. Um, and then, yeah, one evening I went to go fill the pipe up. I tipped it out on the bed. And when I did that, um, it fell onto the blanket. I was such a fiend that I scooped the material back up and threw it back in the pipe because I didn't want to waste it. But when I did that, I scooped up some fibers from the bed. And when I lit the pipe and I inhaled, I gave myself what's called um, smoke inhalation damage. The same thing that happens when people are in a house fire. That's why they tell you to get low because if you in ingest the, the chemicals from those fumes, it scars the inside of your lungs. So I gave myself internal scarring, um, internal damage. It literally felt like I inhaled razor blades straight away. It was just uh, immense pain. I breathed out, coughing my lungs out, and I instantly knew I was something terrible instantly started praying <laughs> how bad that day eh? that's the heat bro god help me please help me i'm sorry i'll never do this again please save me heal me don't let this be something that damages me bro that's how crazy it was that's how how enslaved and bond and in and, and bondage i was that you know i knew to call out to him but i was still engaging in all these sinful practices but you thought that, that was a dream that whole thing for a while you thought that that was didn't really happen nah oh no 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 i no, i knew i knew i knew i tried to dismiss that as a dream but i knew bro after like the few days i knew this was seriously real so after i gave myself smoke inhalation damage it was about three or four days later um an ambulance had to be called to take me to hospital um i'd collapsed my lung and that's what's called a uh, an empyema so because of scarring on the inside of my lung um, the fluid leaks out, you know, like when you cut yourself guys and, and like pus leaks out and all that, well, that's what happened outside my lung and my chest cavity. So my lung just collapsed and I was breathing, like breathing through a straw, like, <gasps> <gasps> and so they put a drain in the side of my chest. I've still got the, the mark to prove it reminds me every time. Yep. What an idiot I am. <laughs> and as soon as they put the drain in between my, like my ribs, a liter of fluid came out. That's crazy. A liter of like yellow pussy fluid came out. I could breathe again. I was like, oh, relief. And then the lady, like, yeah, she had to tell me, she's like, you got to stay in here for two weeks. And they start asking me about my addictions because they did my bloods. And that was embarrassing. Like having to tell someone like, oh, yeah, nah. yeah, I smoke meth, lots of it. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, for two weeks, I was just, I was just in hospital. Um, and this was the first time in my life that I'd ever been faced with my mortality. I'd always thought I was bulletproof, bro. Hmm. I'd always thought that I was, you know, I was untouchable. God's, God's not going to take my life. He's told me. He blessed me. He owes me that. He told me that. That's the arrogance that I had. Entitlement. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, lying in a hospital bed, dealing with just severe pain and, like, liters of blood and pus coming out and, you know, being told that this is an injury that people used to die from and occasionally do die from because, you know, they'll get infections and they never recover. So just realizing just how fragile um, our mortality is, how fragile life is. And that was there that I asked myself the, the real question. And the question was this, Peter, you know enough about God to know that he's real. Mm. You've seen enough of the spiritual realm and you've experienced it to know unequivocally that it's true, mm. that it's real. Um, just based on, on human reasoning of what you know, where you know the way that you must live, there's, a, there's, there's, you know, the Lord calls us to obedience, a way we must live if we're to serve and follow after Christ. You have not followed that at all. You've been in blatant disobedience. Will you get into heaven based on the standards that you know? I knew absolutely there's no way. And it was there on my hospital bed that I gave my life back to the Lord. Wow. So don't be, guys, don't be, if you're praying for people, if you've got people in the family who are, who are in brokenness right now, you know, just, just praise God, praise God and ask him to open their eyes and their brokenness to the um, fragility of their mortality. 
pray that the Lord doesn't um, would, would protect them from falling over into hopelessness, but that in their despair they would recognize that they need hope and there would be signs that the Lord would use to drive them back to being Jesus, the one that they need, the one that is hope. He is hope. He is hope. That's crazy, right? You have a crazy story. Yeah. And I know, guys, I know it's wild, and I know I share it like it's so matter-of-fact. But it kind of, for me, it kind of, well, it, it is kind of matter-of-fact. It's just this this stuff has happened. I not I won't downplay it. I will never like downplay it and not say that it, it it didn't happen to me. Try and hide bits of my testimony because I think, you know, that's a dangerous place to be. Eh? Like just wanting to share people. Oh, I've got Jesus now, but they need to know how I came to know Jesus. Yeah. The fullness of that because people are in bondage. They're enslaved. There's this whole spiritual realm that exists right now that's going on around us. Like right now in this room, as we as we call it all, we talk about God. The Bible says, hey, we're, we're two or three are gathered, yeah. you know, conversing about him. He He's in their midst. We've got angels who are here right in this room. And if we could see all of that, imagine how different we would operate, how, how, how differently we would operate and how we would engage in the rest of the world. You know, there's a, there's a lost and dying world out there, um, workmates, colleagues, friends that we have, and they're waiting to see Jesus in you. You hear me, Facebook world. <laughs> They're waiting to see Jesus in you. Mm. You are the representative of Christ. You are the representative of the kingdom. So don't be sitting there praying that, Lord, just do it through someone else. Lord, I pray you send somebody along to my family. You're it. Mm. You are it. I prayed for my family for the longest time. I said, Lord, just send somebody to go and minister to my family. Then I get moved back down there to go and work with them. And I'm sharing with them all <laughs> about Christ. <laughs> awesome. It's you. Come on. It's you, man. You know, man, this is a cool story, huh? <laughs> this is cool because it's really cool because that next level is still there and it's about to unfold, but in its right intent. You know? So check this out. Why would the devil offer me that? I'm, I'm about to prophesy. I'm about to speak it right now. Why would the devil offer me that? Because he was trying to circumvent what the Lord had planned for my life. Mm, totally. He was trying to steal it. Says he comes to, you know, he's the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the Lord has had me on a journey of, of total surrender and laying it down to him so that he can use the gift fully. I know what my mission is, bro. My mission is souls. Mm. Your mission is souls. Wherever the Lord has called you to be, you've just got to go and, and just represent him to the fullness of your ability, to the fullness of your ability. And he will give you grace mm. to go to levels that you never imagined. You never imagined. That's who he is. Divine, divine empowerment will come where you'll be up in situations, places and go, I absolutely know that this is God because I'm not good enough to be here. Mm. There's no way I'm not good enough. I'm not well, you know, I'm not well known enough. I don't know enough to be here in this room. That's how I feel a lot of my days, like in the work that I'm doing and in the music, things are opening up and, and situations are opening up. And I know, man, this is so you, God. I just give you praise for it. I thank you, Father. Use my life. Let me be a, a testimony of your goodness, of your grace, and of your redemption, Father. Let them see your love manifest in me, Father. Let them see my life and be drawn to you as a result of it. In Jesus' name. Boom. In Jesus' name. Wow. Man. Amen, Father. Wow. I, um, I don't know what we want question i see lots and lots of questions yeah, lots of comments yeah but there's no questions you guys got any questions yeah, does I've anyone some questions. does anyone have any questions yeah so what how do you view this now so god still wants you in music it's still a gift it's still what he's put inside you for a reason absolutely there is dominion here as you take dominion over your gift there is this expansion of his kingdom yep so how do you see this right now for you? Like, what what are you foreseeing? Like, without just prophesying, but in terms of your plans, or do you have any, or have you changed how you operate? Yeah, well, so I have. I've definitely changed how I operate. So in the past, like, I, it used to be very fleshy, and I just knew if I do this, this, if I do A, B, and C, D will happen. Now it's a case of, Lord, I don't know what to do. Like, I know what to do, but I don't I don't know what to do. Because here's the thing. If if we, guys, if we step outside of um, allowing God to control what we're doing, right, if there's any piece of flesh that taints the move, it's no longer holy. It's no longer holy. It's no longer his. That's the truth. And it doesn't take much flesh. 
It could just be a, a little bit of heart's intent in the wrong manner. It could be like, yeah, I'm going to do this for God. And yeah, I'm going to get a bit of money as a result of it too. Mm. Yeah. The intents of our heart. God's been speaking to me a lot about intention. Mm. What, what's the intent of your heart? Mm. Because it's the intent of the, the hearts of men mm. that they'll be judged upon. Mm. Like going back to, to Matthew, um, you know, with the Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy? Do we not perform miracles? They were still able to do all those things and operate in the, in the manifest power of God. Mm. Um, but the, their hearts were way off. Mm. Their hearts were far from him. So for me now, it's just about being attentive to him. My heart totally surrendered to him. And every step, just asking him, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, um, yeah, just ask for your, your Holy Spirit um, to just fill me right now. Give me the lyrics, give me the melody. And then at the end of it, not being so wrapped up in, a, in the song and being like, yeah, this is amazing, this and that. No, none of that. It's just put it on the altar and say, Lord, if there's anything in there that you deem as flesh, right, I'll remove it right now. I'll throw it out. If you do not want the song released, get rid of it. It doesn't matter. It could be the next number one hit. Like I know it's going to be a hit. Throw it out. doesn't matter. But the Lord's had to take me to that place of submission, guys, because I'll be honest, I've been very rebellious, very stubborn. And it's taken the Lord, you know, a number of years to really break that out of me through a series of dreams, encounters, um, hard situations. And we've just got to be obedient. We've just got to be obedient swiftly. No, I've learned that, you know, just when the Lord shows up and he says something, be obedient as quickly as you can. And don't, you know, do your best not to dilly-dally. Because I love Bobby Connor says that. He says, um, delayed obedience is cloaked rebellion. I love that. Delayed obedience is cloaked rebellion. And I remember hearing that one time and straight away I was like, oh, oh, sorry, Lord. Oh, my man. I love you, bro. Oh, forgive me. <laughs> uh, Bobby Connor is, um, is an amazing guy. If you don't know him, you should check him out. He was a Baptist minister. Crazy stories, crazy upbringing, crazy stories now. Amen. And uh, he will be on our podcast sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> but um, here's a question. How is it working in, oh, well, what's it like working at the music industry now that you are awakened fully? Oh, man. My heart goes out to a lot of my brothers. Um, you know, I see them in certain situations. And I, I would, you know, I just do my best to try and get around them and start talking about God. And you'd be, it, it's surprising how many of these guys are raised in the Lord. But for whatever reason, uh, when I say raised in the Lord, I really mean like raised in religion. Hmm. Or, you know, they've been taught value systems that are off and that you can do this or hyper grace, whatever. And so, but many of them also know that hmm. when I start talking about God, man, they get soft. They start to go in themselves and they really start to think. Mm. And so, you know, I, I love these guys and I just continue to pray for them. I continue to, to prophesy that the Lord will bring them to a place where they'll fall on their knees and, and cry out to him for salvation because no one is too far away from God. No one is, is ever too far away from God. And I've been praying for my for my music friends like the Smash Proof Boys. And um, and and as you'll, you'll see now, like Ty and Deech are saved, both of them are in the house. I was praying for them for years. Just found out, yeah, that my producer, my bro D-Love, he just got saved, set on fire. So my, my heart inside the music industry now is just to continue to pray for these guys. And when I get around them, just um, share the goodness of God. And I'll be honest with you guys, it hasn't always been, you know, haven't I haven't always been the model Christian, haven't always been perfect. But I'm I'm getting to that stage. I'm realizing that I've just got to I've got to die more. I've got to die more and and let him um, shine through more. You know, <laughs> what does the word say? He said, "I must disappear, so only you remain." Mm. Mm. You know? Increase, so you must increase. Yeah. Yeah, but the the original of that is "I must mm. disappear." Mm. That's that's the uh, the Greek I believe. "I must disappear, so only you remain." Mm. It's not increase and decrease. No, disappear. Mm. I'm dead. To where they no longer see me, they see Jesus. That when I walk in a room, that you know the heavenly hosts walk in there with me, and the light is so full of me that all of a sudden these guys are like, bro, oh my gosh, I need God. Yeah, you do. Repent, serve Him, give your life to Him, bro. He's awesome. He loves you. So, so yeah, guys, it's a it's a really it's a dark industry, but I know that the Lord is gonna He's gonna sweep through it because music is the most powerful medium that's that's out there right now which affects the hearts and minds of people so strongly, which affects their morality, their decisions and their questions and it answers the questions about who they are intrinsically, that they find it through music. Isn't that crazy? Mm. You know, people, the truth is not everyone's a bookworm, so they find it through the arts. So mm. they'll be listening to certain types of music 
that will begin to tell them who they are. And they go, yeah, that is me. So their value systems are being founded inside this music. It's very dangerous. Music, music operates on a subconscious level. So there's only two things in this world that have the ability to take you back instantly to a moment. Mm. Now, what are those two things? It's music and smell. Mm. You might nostalgia. walk into yeah, right. nostalgia. And it's it's not just a little bit of nostalgia. It's like, oh, the feeling of that breakup. I'm just right back in it right now. And I remember being, you know, 14 years old when this song was playing. Oh, my gosh. Or you smell something. You go into somebody's kitchen and you're like, wow, I'm six years old and I'm holding on to my mother's dress and I'm mm. looking up and she's cooking on the stove. Mm. So music has, has a very powerful ability of, of being able to lock in memories. And this is why worship, praise, and worship is so powerful, why so many people have encounters in, in praise and worship and they feel um, shifts in their in this, in their relationship with God often can come through praise and worship. It's not often when just listening to the pastor when he says something, it's actually like in the worship where all of a sudden you're like, don't know what happened, but something did. So music operates on a subconscious level. So remember this, guys. This is why it's, you got to be very careful Protect your, uh, protect your ear gates. Your eye gates, it's it's actually quite easy to see when sin's happening. You, you know what sin is. You see someone on a TV screen engaging in a sexual act or, or murder, you know, that's bad, turn that off. But you could hear those same things in a song and it's so beautiful that you would dismiss them. Hmm. You hear someone singing about, um, you know, a sexual encounter or singing about murder and it sounds beautiful. You're like, oh, yeah, good. Queen, mama just killed a man. Mm. Everyone's singing it. Like, bro, that's horrific, G. Mm. That's horrific. And people are, people sing this stuff. They love it. Light is in the air. Killed a it's man. crazy, yeah. So music operates on a subconscious level for changing your ideologies and your, your morality and changing yeah, your, your value system and who you are. So they say that. 7% of your brain is, is, is in like your consciousness, like 7% of your brain is, is basically in conscious thinking while you're doing an act. And 93% of your brain is subconscious thinking. Mm -hmm. So think of like an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg is the conscious part of your brain and thinking. The bit underneath is the subconscious, all the thing that's happening underneath. And, the, and how I could explain that is that while you're driving a car, Right, you just know to put your hands at, at ten to two, and that's it. And your eyes are scanning the environment, right. and you're looking at the cedo. But there's all these things going on in your subconscious that you don't realize, mm. where your brain is firing signals saying, "Don't open the world 100 kilometers an hour because um, it might rip the door off. Don't pull the handbrake because that's going to um, spin the car out. Don't jerk the steering wheel too far to the right." These are all happening. These neurons are firing in your brain subconsciously while you're doing an act. The same is true of music. So you're listening on a conscious level. Even if you're just listening, think about this. If you're just listening in your workplace and music is just playing and you're not really paying attention, but you might just like be listening, it's still embedding into your subconscious. Mm. And songs these days so heavily affect um, societal moral conscious um, and, and the moral compass of society that we've now seen shifts in very many areas. And I, I don't even need to go into it. You already know. You already know what we're seeing. We're seeing, um, we're seeing darkness and um, in, in all sorts of, um, yeah, things of, of sexual nature abound. And again, it goes back to the music. Now, if you listen to all popular music today, popular cultural music, the Lord was talking to me about it the other day. It's all temporal in nature. It's self-serving, self-seeking, mm. looks, to, looks to service the pleasure. It's hedonistic. All it is is for the right now. It's the me, 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 the I, I, I. That's satanic. Hmm. That is satanic. It doesn't have to be overtly like, you know, I worship the devil, this and that. No, it's worship yourself. That yeah. is, that's the foundation, like the foundation principles of, of satanism. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's all there. Worship yourself. Do whatever you want to do. Sleep with whoever you want to. Just do whatever you want, bro. Get some money, hurt whoever. You know, it's it's me, me, me. It's I, I. And, and if they don't agree with you, kill them. Mm. They're just your haters, bro. Block out the haters. Mm. They all suck. Mm. Jeepers. Mm. Do you hand people that are envious of your success or that have been? Uh, I don't have to. God does. <laughs> God. I, I Honestly, I just now I just submit it to God. 
it just it is what it is and you know the lord had to kill some pride and in, in, in my heart too where people would say things bad about me especially when i first came back to christ and i didn't know how to deal with it because i've always been the the likable guy that's always was like one of my things i have to be liked by everyone again mm -hmm. my value system was broken if somebody didn't like me i'd go to great odds trying to work this thing out like oh what did i say what can i do to make them like me now I recognize that, look, people are going to talk bad about you. What does Jesus say? You're going to be persecuted for his sake. Mm. If you're really in love with Jesus, you're going to be persecuted for his sake. Mm. So just deal with it. Give it to him. And remember what happened with the apostles when they when they were first accosted and stoned by the um, by the Pharisees and the Sadducees for, for serving after Christ. They, they, they started rejoicing. Yeah, I was just reading that yesterday. <laughs> like, yeah, we're being persecuted for Jesus, bro. Yeah, come on. Shaking hands while they got bruised eyes and sore limbs and, and grazed. They were considered worthy. <laughs> yeah, hello. I'm worthy to be beaten like Christ. So that's it. So how do I handle that? Yeah, I'm now, I'm now worthy of, of my Savior to, to share in the trials that he, that he went through. Um, so there's a couple more questions. My battery's dying, so I'm turning that off. But uh, someone asked, have you had a crazy encounter with God that you don't mind sharing? And then someone else asked, have you seen Jesus face to face? I don't know if you want to talk about it. Hey, um, crazy encounters, I do have a number of them. Um, I had a crazy encounter just happened last year in November um, where the Lord revealed to me um, his mastery of time. So I had an experience where I was in, a, I was in church with a friend of mine. And we're there talking. I distinctly remember looking at my phone, and it was it was um, one thirty three. And I turned the phone off, and we're just sitting there talking about sonship and about God's glory and what it's going to be like when we pass over and on that heavenly day. And then it was about like five or ten minutes had passed, and we realized, oh, we got to go to the restaurant, bro. We're going to miss out on lunch. I go to jump in my car. I check my phone. One thirty three. So moving into that mastery of time, we're talking about translocation. And again, I, I share this real with you guys. Look, you can take it if you want. You don't have to take this stuff. If you don't want to take it, that's fine. You live at your level of Christianity that you want. But I want the fullness. I want I want to live out my life like like Jesus. I want to become like, like my bro, like Jesus. Yeah. So I'm looking at my phone and the time's there. I'm like straight away, boom, the Holy Spirit hits me. I'm like... What is this, God? I've never had this before. And then all of a sudden, the sensors start going off all around the car, like all around, like parking sensors, like boom, 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 boom. I'm like, what's going on here? And then he just said to me, angels. So, oh, my gosh. And there's been a number of revelations that attached to that. So it wasn't. So this is the amazing thing about God. When you have a supernatural encounter, if you go to study his languages and the ways that he speaks, because it says that he's the voice of many rushing waters. So he speaks in many different ways, you'll start to learn that there's so many different attachments to, to a revelation and an encounter that you have. So go and study it. You know, be mindful of the time that something happened. Be mindful of the weather. Be mindful of the people that were around you. Um, be mindful of what you were feeling at that time. Take that all into account because if you really, if you place high value on these things, the Lord will start to show you the deeper level um, that's that's inside all of these things, and what does the Lord say? It's the glory of God to um, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the honor of kings to search it out. Um, so yeah, so that's one of the encounters. And face to face, no, I'm seeking it. I'm seeking it, but I've had it in a dream. I've had the most powerful dreams um, that have literally shaped the course and destiny of my life. And this was one of the most revelatory dreams I had. I was like. I was running in my dream and all of a sudden an angel popped up out of nowhere and says, do you want to meet Jesus? It's like, yo, bro, 100%. <laughs> and instantly I was, I was relocated to, I'm sitting on a park bench with him. We're in a park randomly and I'm sitting on the out, like facing out from a park bench. Jesus is facing inwards and he's talking to two other people. I don't know who those people were, but I'm going to find out who they were. What someday along along the journey of my life, God's going to show me who those two people were. But I'm looking at him side on, and I'm like, "That's Jesus, bro. It's Jesus." And he's just talking to the people. And then he noticed my eyes were were scanning his um his back. I could see the um the scars, bro. I saw the scars on his back. And I remember I asked him. I asked Jesus. I said, "Lord, those are mine, eh?" Those are mine. 
And he said, yes, son. And I remember in my dream, I was weeping, absolutely weeping. He stood me up supernaturally, laid his hands on my forehead, and he started to prophesy over me. I don't even remember what Jesus said, but he just started, he was prophesying over me. So this this all happened in a dream. The next, uh, guys, I'm with you though. I want that encounter, man. I want to see him. I want to see, I want to, I want to see him walk into my room. I'm praying for, I, I know for sure I'm not ready for it. No one's ready for it, but I just say, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> man, Jesus. Jesus. He's good. He's really good. Wow. What are you saying? Thanks for that. I'll keep that in mind. I'm seeking face to face as well. Amen. Amen. Awesome, quarter real brother. Awesome. Well, I guess we wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, we've been going for a while, eh? Can talk. Who's gabbing? Gabbing, gab. I feel like something else is going to come from this. So keep a lookout. Something's happening. God is birthing something of people that are unashamed. But not religious nuts, you know. Mm. When you, when you know Jesus is different, you're not like my heart's never to force anybody to believe what I believe. Right. You know? But you see him, you're messed with forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? It's impossible to go back. <laughs> it's impossible. You, you know? can't go back. The scary thing. I mean, this is crazy. Right? For every Peter T, there's all these musicians who never get to a point where they hit their goal. They, they die chasing it. Or some get there and they don't go to God. They like, we know some artists who the end is not yeah. that good, you know? Yeah. And, you know, we've just got to, that's, that's God, right? You know, it says that, you know, he's got, he's got every single person's days marked out in his books in heaven. This is whether you're saved or unsaved. God has every single book every single breath that we have here on this earth, God has it numbered. It's in his book. Not one person passes from this earth without God knowing about it. Mm. There's no one who's, who's ended up in heaven or in hell. And God was like, Whoa, mm. surprise. <laughs> Early cuss. <'cause. Yeah. laughs> like he's, he's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's the all knowing being. He's the Alpha and Omega. He is perfection. And so, yeah, just, just continue to pray, continue to pray. Because here's the amazing thing about God. Like we as his sons, as his, as his children, as people that know him and believe in him, Jesus said that we can pray in his name, um, seeking, seeking an answer for a matter. And whatever it is that we desire, he'll give it to us. He'll give it to us. That's crazy. So if you earnestly seek him and ask him for your family, he'll, he'll give them mm. to you. You've just got to ask him, Lord, what's the way to, way that I pray? Mm. I think often a lot of people, you know, and I was talking to my mate about this last night. We can pray from a place of fear, which is actually sinful. Mm. Lord, don't let them be destroyed. Father, don't let them be, you know, lost. And we've got, there's fear attached there of like, we don't know what's going to happen. So it's fear. And that's a sin. Fear is a sin mm. because you don't know who he is fully. You haven't allowed that revelation to come into you fully that you know that he's got it all under control. Mm. So we, we're we meant to pray from that place of knowing that when we ask for a matter to be handled by God, that it's done. It's done. You know, in terms of family, like for me, my family thought I was crazy for about a year and a half, maybe two years. But Acts 1631, that was a promise that I held on to, which says, You and your household shall be saved. Ooh, come on, bro. That was a good promise, you know. Come on. You can grab these promises, man. They're like it's Amen. actual coding. It's coding for within and it's coding for the outside, also, you know. Scripture is so powerful. Um, but we'll go into that someday. <laughs> yeah, we'll have another one of these, eh? What do you reckon, guys? Should we have another one? Another court at all? We'll see. <laughs> Hey, let's have a chat like in, in a few months time or in a year's time after some of this next lot of music rolls out and we'll see how it's rolling. Eh? Yeah. We'll see that because yep. yeah, we're, we're about to see some stuff roll out in God. I, I know it. He's got, he's got my life um, squarely in his hands. And um, I know that it's going to be awesome that many people are going to come to know Christ through, through the next lot of music that comes out. So guys, I just ask, oh. pray for me, pray for heavenly melodies, pray for heavenly lyrics um, pray for pray for encounters and, and uh, doors to open that only God opens and doors to shut that no man, no devil can open in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So 
Normally we end with uh, some kind of wisdom bomb or one-liner or a scripture, something that's for you in this season. Wow. And, oh, this is awesome. Intention. That's the word that I've got for 2020. And it, it seems as though we've been shifted into um, an intentional year where the Lord is correcting a lot of things in people's lives, which can be quite hard to deal with. Mm. It's nitty gritty. He's moved some things in my life, which I hadn't dealt with. And he's just said, boom, no more. Cut that off. Cut that off. Um, and he's also opened up some relationships and friendships with people where I'm meeting up with them, like at disciplined times, like being intentional with my friendships, being intentional with my relationships, because time is short. Mm. Time is short. And, you know, what we place what we place value upon um, in God will determine its um well, yeah, well, we, we get to set and determine the value of everything in our lives. Mm. You know, if, if you if you value prophecy, if you value, um, you know, certain or different thing of God, well, then it'll be um, manifest to a high level in your life. Or if you're just like, whatever about it, then he's whatever about it. If you're intentional and really value the power of prayer and you start to to say, Lord, I'm an hour of prayer every day to praying for a personal, praying for a situation. The Lord's going to value that. The Lord sees that. That's the intent of your heart. Of course, he says he's a good dad. He's a good dad. We'll see that go, right, yeah, cool. I can move on that. I'm going to open that up to a greater level. Any, ask any man or woman of God, you know, who's, who's a real mover and shaker in the Lord, someone who's, who's really been with the Lord for a long time and things happen, they'll tell you that you can get nothing from the kingdom without sacrifice mm. salvation is free it's the entry but your level of christendom and your level of walk will require different levels of sacrifice and it will be all of it is ultimately related to time mm. all of it because time is is the currency that we have here on earth because it's it's short for us we only get 80 to 100 years if we're lucky and we've got to do everything in that time which is going to stack up to our eternity that's a whole nother conversation. My goodness. So in, intention guys, just be intentional this year about things and intentional about your relationship with God. And I'm telling you who he'll, he'll honor that and he'll open up, um, he'll open up some things in your life to a new level that you never thought possible in Jesus name. Boom. Intention. Well, there you go. Hope you had fun. Like I had fun. Thank you. I Thank fun. you, bro. Honestly, it's been great to connect and see what God's doing and to have you here. I do believe this is a mark of something new. Amen. New everything. So, Amen, brother. I yeah. see that too. I told you. I saw it. The Lord showed me. <laughs> it's coming. In Jesus' name, it's coming. Boom, it's coming. God bless you guys, right. eh? Take care. <laughs> and uh, talk to you on the next episode. Faith and patience. Faith and patience. Patience means allow it to happen. Stay the same. Stay persistent. Keep going. Faith, know that it can happen at any moment. Get excited because it can happen at any moment. You're so close. Don't quit now. Keep pushing. You got this.